petition to join our choir and we'd love to have you come. <laughs> I'll get the schedule for choir practice sent to you. I've got your email, you know. The second thing I wanted, that I learned on, uh, I guess it was last Wednesday is uh, the wedding vows are not in the Bible because the verse I wanted was for richer, um, for, no, for sickness or in health because of what Teresa has done. And thank goodness she didn't read on to richer or poor. <laughs> so, uh, but it's been, a, uh, it's been a long year, but it's been a very fulfilling year if you can imagine. It's, it's hard to imagine, but the one thing I learned about and I'm still learning it about is a lot of times we look forward and pray for God to do things for us. And what I found out going through this is you need to look back and be thankful for the things that he did that you might have missed. Um, a year ago this last Christmas, I fell on some ice while in Red River. A real heavy dew had blown in right at darkness and within minutes everything had iced over so it was everything was slick and as soon as it hit the ice I went numb from the neck down I knew I was in trouble uh, my daughter was there and her husband and father-in-law and I told them to get me help as, as quick as possible the ice was so bad that the paramedics couldn't get to me on the driveway one of them finally crawled up on his hands and knees to get above me and brought the rope that brought up the flat board that they were able to put me on, secure me, and then they let the flat board slightly slide down to the bottom of the driveway. It took two ambulances to get me to the Taos emergency room. I don't understand why, because I don't, I, I wasn't paying close attention to what everybody was saying because my arms were so much in pain. And I could move them, but they were in pain, but that's all I could move. Unfortunately, they could do nothing for me at Taos. Teresa took on the emergency room doctor and very graciously put her in her place. She was telling us that an ambulance was going to come and take me to Albuquerque. Needless to say, we had already contacted my son, Ryan. Now, this is on Christmas Day, too. He had secured an air ambulance from Amarillo to airlift me to Lubbock. And Teresa was able to fly with me, which is another form of blessing from God. The UMC trauma unit was notified that the, there's a trauma case coming in was simply amazing. Within minutes, the doctors and nurses were all about me. Before the end of the day, they had run all the tests, MRIs, and did all the uh, necessary work by the end of the day. Ryan had then flown in from Fort Worth to be with me. Jake and Amanda had come in from uh, from, town, from Red River, where the, we were, our whole family was. And they all, uh, Teresa and Jake and Amanda and Ryan, and my, my understanding is, because I, I wasn't conscious of what was going on at that time, they all met with the doctors, and they decided to wait until Monday to do the surgery. Uh, I don't remember much of anything until after the surgery. While talking to the surgeon after the procedure, and you'd have to know Jake, my son-in-law, he just blurted out the question, will he be able to play golf again? And the surgeon's response was, let's get him walking first. And that took us all back. Uh, I think this is when we contacted Pastor, our family, and asked for prayers, and that's when it all started. Now, the first rehab center we went to was South Plains. And we were trying to get into it on New Year's Eve, and finally, about 6 or 7 o'clock, got the insurance approval, and we were moved into the South Plains. At this point, I couldn't even feed myself. Shortly after our stay there, they say Teresa and I got COVID. Uh, they tested us about three times. Teresa was coughing. She has a bad cough, 
And I think they were convinced that she probably had it, but they said we both had it. Uh, they immediately put me on an IV and I never had any symptoms, but it might be because they did that. They kicked Teresa out for five days. And here I am when I can't do anything. I'm laying in a bed, can't feed myself. Fortunately, Amanda, who knew someone at the South Plains, somehow managed to get them to let her stay with me. I don't know what the difference would have been for that time. But that was another blessing from God. It was during this time one of the therapists mentioned Moody's, another facility. And that's like mentioning Burger King from a guy that works at McDonald's. It was a competitor. And uh, my nephew was sitting there. He had come in on, and spent a day with me when Teresa came back to Odessa for some business. And of course, the younger people have their computers in front of them. And he says Moody's and Gabe plugs it into his computer. He looks it up and sees it's a, pretty interesting. He calls Ryan. So within 10 minutes of that young man saying, you need to go to Moody's, we started searching for the Moody's well, to do that. Moody's was a facility that was just for spinal cord and brain damage patients. Teresa and Amanda went over to check it out. And they were leaving. There was a patient that had been there before, just happened to be coming out, and told them that he had fallen off an airplane wing and couldn't walk and came to Moody's and within less than a year, he had full recovery. So then we decided to go ahead. We had to interview to get in this facility. And once we were approved, we made the best decision we made and moved to Moody's. This is when I realized that, I, that God was really in control. Those three things, the, the physical therapist mentioned in Moody's, they go check it out and there just happens to be a patient walking out of there that had an injury similar to mine. I don't think it was a coincidence. And that patient checked on me every two or three weeks the entire time I was there. Once I got to Moody's, and it was about the second week, I think, our church kids came to visit. And they're going to uh, the same competition they're going to on February 4th, which is about a year ago. They came and they won that competition but before they went home, they came to Moody's to see us. They sang all the youth songs at the front conference room. When they left, one of the aides came up and asked me if that group was from the Adventist church. And I told her it was from my church in Odessa. When she had recognized those songs that she used to sing growing up as an Adventist. She looked me in the eyes and said, maybe God was sending her a message. I don't think that was a coincidence either. My stay at Moody's was over eight months. And you begin to know the staff like your family. One of the aides had a mother that came very ill. And they had to put her on a ventilator and I asked her, I said, you need to pray. And she had, I don't think she'd ever been to church before. And I began to pray with her each night for her mother. Uh, we prayed for over two months. And when I was last there, her mother is now home. She recovered before I left and was in a, uh, assisted living, getting her rehab similar to uh, mine to get back into shape. But that's when I thought maybe there's a reason this accident happened. Uh, another aide had a baby during my stay. She was one of my favorites. And they had a baby shower, and Teresa and I were invited to the baby shower, and we went. And out of about 60, 70 people, we were the only two white people there. And... Early on after that, I asked her, I said, what about the father? She never said anything about the father. Her, and she said that they weren't living together. And I told her, I said, we need to start praying for him to come around 
and she needed to pray too. And then about four o'clock in the morning, my phone goes off and it was on the desk. I'm laying in the bed. I can't get to it. But one of the nurses came in about five and I said, I'm scared to check and see because nothing, you don't get a message at four in the morning that's very positive. She looked at it and it was Bree had had her baby and she sent me the message telling me how much she weighed and everything. And I teased her about naming that baby after Jack and I, my grandson and me. I said, and she gave me the baby's name, AKA Timothy Jack. And she, we, I tease her about that all the time, but that's, that's how close you get to some of these uh, aides that were basically taking care of me. Uh, once the baby was born, she told me that he was trying to get, the father was trying to get involved, but he didn't know what to do. He had never had a father figure in his life. I told her to show him what to do, work it all out for the baby's sake and keep praying. She told me things were getting better and we continue to pray. And maybe God had a plan to use me for something during that stay. During the time at Moody's, I was asked to share with some of the other parents, uh, other patients, that uh, hang on, see, about my positive attitude. Because when this happened, Jake, my f- son-in-law's father, had always told the kids, you got to get your mind right. And they'd ask him, have you got your mind right? And I, I took that. And I said, told myself, I'm going to get my mind right and I'm going to beat this. And it was, the other patients that were there were various, but I mean, to give you an example, I had my church's kid, uh, children's group come and sing to me and another one got, another patient there got served divorce papers. So, and so they asked me to, and I started sharing some of the visiting, because if you know me very well, if I'm going to be somewhere eight months, I'm going to know everybody before it's all said and done. And, uh, but I, I told them that you must get your mind right. You must believe in what the therapists were doing, because if you don't believe you can get better, you most likely won't get better. And you must pray to God. Teresa would come into the facility and walk down the hall and hear a bunch of laughter coming from my room and there'd be two or three nurses, four nurses in the room because they almost came part of our family. Now they were down there mainly because I, got, I kept candy in my room. I don't, you're not supposed to have anything. But about eight or nine o'clock at night, you need a little sugar fix. They knew where to come. They all knew Jack and Maggie, Jake and Amanda and treated them like family. Since I was there about eight or nine months, I did try to make the best of the, of the bad situation. As Jake said, I could run for mayor of Moody's and get every vote. <laughs> I made my mind up that I was going to beat this with God's help. And with Teresa in charge and all my friends and family praying and church members praying, he will see me through. I learned a lot during that rehab. First, all things are possible through Christ. I made my mind up. I was going to walk again. As Jake's dad always said, you've got to get your mind right and right with the Lord. I learned the power of prayer. I experienced the power of prayer. And I realized how much my church meant to me when I couldn't attend. I experienced how important your family is when you need them. And I had friends and family praying for me from California to Florida. I'm most thankful this ordeal for Teresa. She's been by my side the entire journey. I thank God for bringing her into my life and for her leading me to him. It's been over a year now since my fall and she's helped me to keep my mind right. She's been there f- with me through thick and thin. We've laughed and cried throughout the whole ordeal. 
She also, to keep me in a positive mood, rented me what I called my shagging wagon every weekend so we could get away from the rehab center. It was a van that had the access to put your, to put your wheelchair in and lock it in. We drove it to Odessa two or three times just to come to church. I had to be back at 10 o'clock every night, had a curfew. She made sure I was there. And, uh, and I think God picked the perfect person to lead me through this ordeal. I, don't, I couldn't have done it. And luckily he gave her strength, patience, and persistence to care for me during this process. We still have a ways to go for a full recovery. We want to thank everyone for their prayers, especially our church members, as well as all the friends and family. You don't realize when a person comes up to you while you're having lunch and tells you that they've been praying for you. I had a lady that I served on a committee about five or six years ago. She came on the committee two months before I left. I re vaguely recognized her, but through social media and everything, I mean, it just takes you back when you're at a restaurant and she says she's been praying for me since the whole deal. I feel God has been present the entire journey and will continue until I've completely recovered. I hope he will allow me to reach out and help someone to know the gospel and see how it works. We've got a ways to go and there'll be many opportunities that I need to take advantage of. I've never asked God why this happened to me. It wasn't long before I realized I might make a difference in someone's life. The first friend I made at Moody's was Bruce. Bruce had had a brain injury from a uh, our, uh, SUV, uh, not SUV, uh, ATV accident. And the first morning I was there, he was sitting by himself and I joined him for breakfast. And I think we had breakfast every day since before I, until I left. Uh, we became friends and his wife would always come for lunch and dinner and got to know Teresa as well. And I couldn't believe it, but at Moody's, they don't serve orange juice for breakfast, but you, they had a refrigerator, you get your own orange juice and always had a jug of orange juice in there. And one day Bruce asked if he could have some and I said, sure. And so I put my name and Bruce's name on the, and when Amanda would bring the jug, so it, he could always have his orange juice too. And it wasn't long, his wife came and asked me, he said, how did you get, when did Bruce start drinking orange juice? And I said, well, he, every morning now. And she said, he, she had been married to him 30 plus years and never once saw him drink orange juice. <laughs> but we helped to keep Bruce's attitude changed after we became friends, according to the staff. And we tried to help to keep him in good spirits because his, his ability to be able to go home and walk again was probably not there. Unless God did some major, major miracles. And it's tough because most of the people there, I'd say over half, didn't have the, the results that I was going to be able to get. And that, that makes it tough. I have to say there were memorable moments that will never be forgotten due to this accident. Just three or four months ago, the first therapist I had at the South Plains Went, I went to visit her because I told her I was going to walk again. And I was on a walker, and we went to visit her at, at South Plains. And she looked me straight in my eyes and said, you know this is a God thing, that you are walking. And she said, patients who have a C3 to C7 injury in their spinal cords don't walk again. I will never forget that. Weekends in the shagging wagon. I'll never forget that. The youth coming up to visit, I'll never forget that. No, there wasn't any other church members that came to see most of the patients there. I, I saw one pastor that came one time. Breakfast was Bruce, I'll never forget that. Everything my kids and grandkids did for me, I'll never forget that. 
the calls and the friends that came to visit me, and the calls from Pastor Neff, I'll never forget that. All the prayers from family and friends and people that don't even know me, I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget everything Teresa has done for me during this time. She is the angel God has given me to complete his healing process. Amen. Stop here to do closing prayer. Thank you, brother. Find, find, find that closing prayer. Let's see. Find that closing prayer. Tell him yes. And truly, God is in the business of miracles. And praise the Lord. We'll now have a special music to be given to us by the Gavas family. Oh. And every time they're here with us, we've been, all, we've been blessed by their presence, their talents, and sharing with us uh, music. And uh, in a few days, they will be back to work in California. So let's pray for their trip, their journey over there. And after this music, we will be proceeding to our Lord's Supper.
If you'll join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed on me and my family. Thank you for the guidance you've given Teresa and I. And I ask that you be with the staff at Moody, the patients at Moody, and be with all the friends and family that have prayed for me during this time of year. Help me to keep my mind right, my mind right in your eyes and in your ways. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 